Live from John Hammond Street, digital address GA006714 at the Sawi Kanda and Accra. This is News at 10 on TV3. We're also live on your DSTV channel 279 and streaming on Facebook and on 3news.com. I'm Stephen Enti. Welcome to the news. Let's first start with the major news highlights. And seven persons accused for the murder of two police officers at Budumburam in the central region have been remanded into custody. They are facing a total of four counts of murder, conspiracy to commit murder and abetment to commit crime. On tonight, the Health Services Workers Union is demanding that government stop calculating its members' market premium based on their 2012 salary. The Deputy General Secretary of the Union, Franklin Ousuansa, told our reporter Daniel Opoku the current practice has resulted in a reduction in the current basic pay. And prices of petroleum products have begun increasing after various oil marketing companies were directed by the National Petroleum Authority to apply the revised energy sector levies. The NPA's directive is, is as announced in the supplementary budget presented by the Finance Minister. Based on the revision, petroleum would witness a 20 pesos adjustment, while diesel would also see a 20 pesos rise in price per litre. And elsewhere in South Africa, xenophobic attacks recorded in Pretoria less than a week ago has escalated to the capital, Johannesburg. Three people have been confirmed dead, according to sources. On Monday, another wave of violence broke out, forcing many to flee, while non-South African under attack abandoned their businesses. Right, uh, those were our major news highlights. And remember, you can follow us on our live stream on Facebook and on 3news.com. Let's start with our very first story tonight. Xenophobic attacks recorded in Pretoria, South Africa, uh, less than a week ago, has escalated to the capital, Johannesburg. Three people have been confirmed dead, according to sources. And uh, on Monday, another wave of violence broke out, forcing many to flee while non-South Africans under attack abandoned their businesses. Several auto shops were set on fire in the renewed wave of attacks. Some foreign business owners received machete wounds and were rushed to hospital for treatment. And uh, foreign nationals, including Ghanaians, according to reports, now live in fear. Rogue indigents have resorted to looting. The attacks began last Tuesday as business owners in South Africa were overpowered by black South Africans and hit with truncheons, metals, and all kinds of objects in the central business district. Non-South Africans accused of occupying jobs meant for indigents were beating up. In other areas of Pretoria, shops belonging to foreigners were set on fire. And uh, fire officials calling to put out the blaze could do very little to prevent the inferno from spreading to adjoining shops. And still related to this, my colleague Alfred Okansi engaged a freelance journalist in South Africa, Yakub Moro, on the current situation in that country on the xenophobic attacks. What's the situation there as we speak? Currently, though, uh, the situation is very tense. As, as it started earlier on last night, on Sunday evening, already two weeks ago, as I narrated to you over the weekend, we had speculation and then um, about uh, attacks that will be conducted by locals on the 2nd of September, which is Monday, and it's happening to be today. So these attacks were mainly by locals who are in the uh, transport sector, who are normally driving the trucks in the country. They are alleging that we, I'm part of them, so we foreigners, mostly black Africans, we've taken over the industry, which is the truck industry. So they can sit down for us to like take over the entire nation, all the jobs that they are having. But right. all these are business allegations. 
but can you confirm that there's news we're hearing of the death of some three uh, persons? And w yeah, what, what are their nationalities specifically, if you can tell us? Just few, maybe within two minutes ago, we just recorded one death. So the number has been up to four, no longer three. And then um, the two that I know of are Zimbabweans, but the other two we are not away. So at least by the, by the end of maybe by tomorrow, we have the nationality of those guys. And then there is one Ghanaian who was stabbed in Kempton Park. He was stabbed also. He went uh, to a crèche to drop the kids at school. So on his, his way coming back, he was attacked. I see. So what's the state of this Ghanaian who you say was attacked? Was he hurt in any way? Can you describe the injury that, that, that he was left with after this attack? He, he was hurt. I think he's, he was being hit with a machete in the head. If, you, if I can show the picture to you, you're going to see a mark right in the middle of his head. But now he's being treated in the hospital. The graphic, the images are very horrific, so we can't show. So he, you say that he was attacked by machete-wielding uh, Irish persons Lopez. there. And, and which area is this? Is it Pretoria? It's in, no, it's in Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Closer, we call it uh, yeah, closer to the airport. So, so what has been the response of the Ghanaian authorities there? Um, I mean, the, the, the Ghanaian High Commission there in, in South Africa. To be honest with you, at times we feel like we are no longer, it's better we change our nationality to either Zimbabwe, Zambia, Lesotho, etc. One, like myself and most of us, two weeks ago, we had all those letters, streaming, um, WhatsApp, social media, etc. Uh, giving us a signal or warning us from the hotspot wherever we find ourselves. And then the Zambian High Commissioner, in conjunction with all the various high commissioners in South Africa, they began issuing strong warnings to its citizens, but we got nothing from our embassy. We have a consulate or embassy in Pretoria. We got nothing from them. It's only yesterday, it's Sunday night, that we had a, 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 a voice note making rounds, saying the High Commissioner called someone. Okay. And seven persons accused for the murder of two police officers at Budumburam in the central region have been remanded into custody. They're facing a total of four counts of murder, conspiracy to commit murder and abetment to commit crime. Here's a report by Salom Amenya. The suspect on Wednesday, August 28, shot and killed a service driver, Sergeant Michael Jamesi, and Lance Corporal Awal Mohammed, both personnel of the Motor Transport and Traffic Department, MTTD Detachment at Kaswa in the central region during routine checks on the Accra Winneba Highway. The seven, Eric Kojodia, Isaac Emisa, Ibrahim Zakaria, Isaac Mensa, Oblite Komi, Victor Yire and Fatal Ahmed were on Monday hauled before the court, presided over by Her Honor Rosemont Dodua Ejiri. The prosecution, led by ASP Sylvester Apia, pleaded with the court to remand them into custody to enable the police conduct further investigation. He further prayed the court to remand Eric Dia. Isaac Emisa and Ibrahim Zakaria to BNI custody while the remaining four be remanded into police custody. The presiding magistrate remanded the accused persons as prayed by the prosecutor. Eric Dia, who is said to be the main suspect, was arrested on board a black Vos Virgin Gulf with registration number JW5972-18 heading towards the Volta region following a tip-off. The case has been adjourned to September 26. And public health facilities across the country lack the capacity to run DNA tests. Uh, cases which require such tests have to be referred to Accra. Williams Evans Income reports from Kumasi. So in the moment of doubt, one thing must help establish the truth. Deoxyribonucleic acid, also known as DNA. But unfortunately, 
Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, which is the major referral center here in the northern sector, doesn't have the facility. So, what happens to cases which require proof through a DNA test? Cases within the Ashanti Regional Police Command, which require such tests, are rare though. But the few are sent to the Kolobu Teaching Hospital. This year, two women were allegedly murdered at Abrepo, a suburb of Kumase, which required the police to run a DNA test on a suspect as part of its investigations. The samples had to be sent to Accra, and the results is yet to be produced. The most recorded DNA-inclined cases are paternal denials and neglect. In all these instances, cases are referred to Accra for determination. The social welfare department plays a critical role in this process, often directed by the court to assist. Such cases are not many. Last year we had four cases, January to December, and this year up to April we've done four. Yeah, but after April we haven't had any such case. We have been sending the cases to Tama. That's where Tama Lashibi area. Head of laboratory services at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, Dr. NSAJ is hoping that a major DNA referral center is established in the northern sector of the country. As an institution, yes, we are working very hard in establishing it. And uh, I do admit that at this point that it's not ready. And uh, certainly it's affecting job and the work that we do. It is unfortunate that we haven't started yet, but it is not too late. And uh, as a directorate, we have that vision of starting this service. Until such a center is opened, all DNA-inclined cases would continually be referred to Accra. This is still news at 10 live from the news hub at Adesawe Kanda in a crowd. We have more news for you. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, the Ayalolo Public Transport Services has resumed operations after close to a year's break. Public relations officer of the Greater Accra Passenger Transport Executive, Fred Chidi, says uh, some of its operational and financial challenges have all been addressed. Here's a report by Ajua Adobia Ozu. The quality bus system referred to as Ayalolo halted operations for 11 months due to operational challenges including funding. The Accra Denton route has been added to the existing Amasaman to the corridor. The buses now operate only during rush hours in the mornings and evenings. Public Relations Officer of the Greater Accra Passenger Transport Executive Fred Chidi outlined the new reforms intended to sustain the service. It's on the Adenta Accra CBD, we do not have dedicated lanes as we speak. There have been some studies done on the corridor by the uh, Department of Urban Road, Ministry of uh, Roads and Highways, to introduce what we call the contra flow, where the buses at designated points will move, uh, will, will run against oncoming traffic. He addressed the irregularities regarding the new ticketing system. And I believe everybody may have exhausted their cards as we speak right now. Those who have not exhausted it probably did not get on board Ayalolo again. But if you have, you would have exhausted it. But nevertheless, if you still have it, um, we encourage you to use it. Besides, in this initial phase, we've introduced a um, paper ticket. Government in 2016 procured 245 buses from the Scania Group of Sweden to operate the bus rapid transport system. 25 buses are expected to be deployed in Accra by the end of this month. And prices of petroleum products have been increasing after various oil marketing companies were directed by the National Petroleum Authority to apply the revised energy sector levies. The MPA's directive is as announced in the supplementary budget 
presented by the finance minister. Based on the revision, petrol will witness a 20 pesos adjustment, while diesel would also see a 20 pesos rise in price per litre. The increase is as a result of the road fund levy, energy debt recovery levy, as well as the price stabilisation and recovery levies uh, increased by 20 percent. This should mean that the litre of petrol is now expected to be sold at five cities, 39 pesos for both petrol and diesel. A visit to some fuel stations revealed that oil marketing firms Shell and Total had increased each litre of petrol and diesel by 19 pesos effective September 1st. On a recent report released by the Bank of Ghana has placed mobile banking as the number one mode of payment in the country. The report, which is the latest payment systems oversight annual report of 2018, was released this week by the Bank of Ghana. The report shows that mobile money transactions and mobile banking services grew in both volume and value, while other payment platforms such as checks, cards and internet banking either saw declines in volume or value or both, or at best grew marginally. Check code line clearing CCC, one of the numerous parts of payment, saw a negative change with the report noting that the total volume of interbank checks cleared in 2018 declined by 1.1%. The value of transactions, however, went up by 13.3%. In mobile banking, on value of transactions, there was a huge jump of 276.88% to 5.6 billion in 2018 from 1.5 billion. Ghanaians say they choose to use mobile banking due to its relative flexibility. I would recommend mobile banking than getting to the banking hall where uh, they waste your time and the rest. Mobile banking helps a lot quick. You get your money, whatever you want to do, you can transact business very fast. Mobile banking is more accessible and easy in terms of um, making the little, little transaction. In a situation where you need to you know, transfer money to somebody in a room, area where there's no bank available it's very easy to do that on on the on the mobile money the report noted financial technology companies played a significant role in the payment ecosystem in the areas of product development delivery channels data analytics data management technology support and systems development the Health Services Workers Union is demanding that government stops calculating its members' market premium based on their 2012 salaries. Uh, the Deputy General Secretary of the Union, Franklin Ousu Ansa, told our reporter Daniel Opoku the current practice has resulted in a reduction in current basic pay. According to the union, tension is already brewing due to the wrongful calculations on the market premium. The Health Services Workers Union alluded that its investigations showed that government has consistently been using their 2012 salary to determine their premium instead of their current salary structure. Deputy General Secretary Franklin Owusu Ansan demanded that government corrects the anomaly. Would you also give another block market premium and then pay them on current salaries, but for health workers, you pay them based on 2012 salaries. This is unacceptable. We have written to Fair Wages severally. We have written to Ministry of Finance severally. Nobody is responding. And we think it is time all health workers come together to tell government that pay us that allowance based on our current salaries. The union also raised concerns about the recently negotiated 12% salary increase on the single span pay policy for all public sector workers. It argued that government should rather initiate the negotiations for an improved percentage instead of the 12% handed over to labor. We welcome the news of the 12% though and even this year the negotiation was done in late August. Previously it was done somewhere around June, July. And we are of the view that if it is negotiated close to the year, let's say December, things would have played out and then we would have known exactly what we are looking at. The union 
again asked government to implement its collective bargaining agreement and also initiate discussions on the use of pension funds after retirement. Some institutions are saying they don't even have money to implement it. And it is true, some institutions are not income generating. How would you ask them to pay from their internally generated fund when you know they don't generate money? So it means they still have to rely on government subvention. And if the subvention is not coming, it means they can't implement it. And the Minister of Employment and Labour Relations, Ignatius Bafuiwa, has warned civil society groups against misapplying donor funds claiming to fight cocoa, uh, child labour in the cocoa industry. The sector minister was addressing a two-day stakeholders workshop in Accra. The Employment and Labour Relations Minister, Ignatius Bafuiwa, expressed disappointment over some civil society organizations which misapply funds intended to fight child labor. For those of us who also go for donor funds to come and fight issues of child labor, I do not utilize those monies on that, yet write very good reports to justify the reception of those monies. Please, if not anything at all, God is also watching you. He was critical on such and other organizations which put together videos which dent the country's image in the international community. We must move from rhetorics into action, and the time is now. And for civil society, sometimes you, you go for international programs and you see videos on your country. Sometimes you may not have even seen them, even as a minister of, of your own country. I'm not saying it's bad. The UNICEF representative in Ghana, Anne Claire Dufe, underscored the need to protect the rights of children. Children live in families. If um, the father is sick, he may then decide that okay, the, the child will go to work. Uh, or who is going to pay uh, you know, for medical expenses in the family. Other speakers requested government to show commitment in fighting child labor, particularly in the cocoa sector. Let's go to the presidency now, where President Akufuado has charged members of the uh, Songhai community to assist government in ensuring that uh, vices within the West African sub-region are not transported into the country. The president was addressing the leadership of the Songhai community in Ghana, who called on him at the Jubilee House. Ghana's population is made up of some 75 ethnic groups among them are the Songhai, originally from Mali, who have been part of the Ghana Empire from the 6th to the 13th century. Paramount chief of the Songhai community in Ghana, Chief Amadou Fatawalasan Maiga II, whose address was read on his behalf, pledged to continue to live peacefully and abide by the country's laws. President Ikufado said, with a carefully planned agenda of fostering inter-ethnic and inter-tribal relations among West African nations, negative happenings can be eliminated from the sub-region. The problems that there are in our part of the world in West Africa, many of them can be readily and easily addressed if the kind of links that you have established here in Ghana are promoted all across West Africa. We know the difficulties that are taking place in Mali, for instance, and we want to make sure that those are the kind of problems that are not transported here to us here in Ghana. And if the way that you conduct yourselves and the way in which you, you bond and live with us here in Ghana is the best way we can make sure that those kind of developments don't take place in our country. The great-grandchildren of the Songhai Empire came to Ghana in the 13th century and settled in areas like the Laribanga in the West Gonja district of the Savannah region and in Zulezu in the Jamoro district of the Western region. That's so how we wrap up with News at 10. Thanks very much for your time. On behalf of the crew, good night. There's more news at 3news.com.